Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about DML triggers in the SQL Server. First of all, triggers are the one of the important object in the SQL Server. So in this, so DML triggers are one of the type. So what is the DML triggers? So DML triggers is nothing but a data manipulation language triggers. So which will help us to fire the DML triggers whenever we perform a DML commands on the SQL Server. Now, so there are two type of DML triggers inside the DML triggers. The first one is after triggers, after triggers. So here, which we are going to use for our after class, after class. Second one is instead triggers. instead triggers so here we'll be using so instead of class so instead of class instead of instead of class so what is the difference between these two triggers like these are the two sub types in the dml triggers so if you see if you go to the after triggers so this trigger is going to fight so whenever the sql action completes let us say so we when I say DML uh, triggers so these DML triggers are going to fire so for insert option for insert operation update operation and delete operation okay so now that after trigger is going to be fired so whenever this SQL insert operation succeeds so whenever update can completes so whenever delete finishes so once these options once this original action finishes then this trigger is going to fired so in this example, let me show you how to work with them after triggers. It means that for trigger or after triggers. So before going to uh, write, write a triggers, let me show you what are all the tables I am going to use for this trigger example. So if you see here, I have an audit table, so which is created for our purpose. So if you see this audit table is a table which contains ID is a column and audit date at what time the audit has been happened and what is the message and what is the table. See here, I created an audit table for general purpose. So whenever I do operations on the employee table or whenever I do an operations on any table, I want to capture that information in the audit table. So that is the reason why I have a general column audit table as well. Let us say if I, if I perform a DML operation on the employee table, so I'll be capturing that audit table name as employee. So in the similar way, if I perform any operations on the department table, so that time I'll be performing uh, I'll be keeping that department table in the audit table column. So message is nothing but whatever the action I am doing, I am going to keep that message here. In the audit date, at what time that audit has been happened, at what time this update or delete or insert have been happened and that ID. So like that ID, like whatever the ID primary key column in the particular table, I'll be keeping that. Now let me write, well, let me write one sample uh, uh, a trigger. So on the top of the employee table or any table. So it is a kind of insert. So let me show you the employee table. So if you see this, this is my employee table which contains ID employee, first name, last name, uh, salary, JD, designation, ID department. So let me write a after trigger on the top of the employee table. So the syntax is similarly uh, similar as like a SQL view or stored position, but it is a trigger. So create trigger, trigger name, trigger name like a will be keeping as a TR underscore i'll be keeping a name like this i'll be keeping table name so t trigger underscore employee table name underscore so what i am trying to do insert insert okay on what is the table you want to keep i want to create table is employee i want to create a trigger on the employee table on is on after that i need to put a table name and what option you want to put for insert it means that it is insert uh, trigger for insert yes so i'll be keeping like a normal begin and the end so here in the middle i'll be writing the um, uh, commands so what is the command which i am planning to write so whenever so there is an insertion happens on the employee table so i want to do this option operation next to the insert so here i'll be doing like this so i'll be creating a, uh, one variable see here i'll be showing how to create a variable in the triggers as well declare some id as int okay now select i'll be assigning value to the id id equal to so here i'll be taking id emp from 
inserted inserted it means that whenever you perform an insert operation so this trigger is going to fire so what are all the rows has been inserted those rows will come into the inserted table see it automatically maintained by the sql server you don't need to uh, worry on the inserted one so now now i'll be inserting the values into audit table insert values insert into audit table okay and values values here i'll be putting so this id like what are the columns i'm expecting on the audit table id comma next is what are all the thing i'm expecting so id and audit date so at what time that particular id has been inserted in the employee table so i i'll be keep, i'll be using get date comma next one is message so new new employee added added comma and what is the table name here i will be writing a uh, trigger on the employee table so that's why i can use this directly here employee table name so at the a later some point of time so means this audit table is a general table which i can use for all other tables as well that's the reason why i have a audit table as well now let me execute this let me close this parenthesis and let me execute this so if i execute this it has been created successfully now let me insert one row in put to the particular table employee table insert into employee table values okay so let me see first employee table structure so that it's very easy for me id employee id employee is a identity key here so next one is first name i'll be keeping as um, uh, mary next uh, last name as m comma next uh, salary as uh, some like a four uh, like a yeah 3500 comma next uh, jd as I'll, I'll be putting something like that 10 iphone 10 iphone uh, 2010 so i can i can put whatever the date i want and uh, jd as uh, yeah just joined it as that and designation as a uh, tester and uh, id department as uh, some two okay so now i'll be inserting these so let me run this yeah so one row has been inserted see if i just ran one insert command if you see this two rows like a one row is affected here and one more row is affected here it means that so one row is inserted into employee table so other row is inserted into the audit table okay means whenever i do a insert operations on the top of this table so it is going to insert one more row into the audit table now let me run this first so uh, select start from employee so if you go in the down so there is a record which has been inserted with a id employee as 20 mary m and with all these details now let me go to the audit table so if you see here so that 20 same again inserted here and audit date this is the time and date and time and message new employee added and audit table is employee okay so this is how the my insert trigger is going to work now let me write a trigger for delete let me try write a trigger for delete so if you see that that trigger so let me write the trigger for delete create similarly similarly same way we, i'll be following the same syntax trigger underscore table name employee underscore delete naming convention is very important for a developer in, on the table name is employee for delete i'll be writing for delete yes so similarly i'll be using the i'll be using the same till here these declare and all okay from deleted i need to use here deleted okay next so next so i'll be inserting the similarly the same uh, statements here so instead of here employee deleted employee deleted this is how i'll be writing now at the end like i'll be put as a begin here next i'll be keeping as end here so if you understand clearly so this is a uh, delete trigger so which is on the top of employee table and with a delete option for delete and here i'll be taking a id as i declared here and i'll be getting that id employee from the deleted so whenever you perform a delete operation on the top of the employee table so this trigger is going to fire so that time that id particular id will be there in the deleted table 
and that id i will be inserting into this id employee and next i will be inserting the uh, those details into the audit and saying that employee deleted from the table as employee now let me create this yeah now let me apply a delete command on the top of this table so let me write it delete what is the delete syntax delete from what is the table name employee employee where so what is the employee do you want to delete now let me see this so i have how many employees are there so i have around like 18 employees are there i am trying to delete from 16th employee so let me write delete from employee where id emp equal to 16 so i will be deleting so this 16th id employee okay means what will happen so whenever i run this particular command so delete command works on the employee table as well as this, this trigger is going to fire it means that again two rows will be affected here so let me run this once i run this if you see this yeah two rows has been affected so one row it is got deleted from the employee table so other row is it is inserted data into the audit table now let me go to the first table what is the id yeah, id employee 16 is deleted or not let me go to this uh, select start from employee you see here so there is no 16 if you see there is no 16 here is 15 and 17 is there now let me go to the audit table if you see the audit table select start from audit if you see the audit table audit table will be containing two records so one is the employee added which is with the id of 20 and one more employee deleted with a 16 the table is employee now so similarly i can write the triggers on the department table so that time i'll be using the same id audit date message so new department added department has been deleted and the audit table as department so so now now onwards so whatever the operations you do on the employee table so those will be captured in the audit so mainly so these triggers will be useful for the audit purpose okay and like in this table so we are not capturing the user information so you can do that even so what are all the columns you are planning to capture so you can capture with the help of the triggers now let me try to insert one more uh, uh, record so tim uh, let us say tim uh, j and i'll be putting as a salary as 5500 and i'll be putting as a same other details as 2012 here instead of 10 i'm just trying to insert it so when i insert it so as as all you know that so it will be inserting two rows so one row from the one row for the employee table the other row into the audit table so now let me run the select start from employee so if you see here it will be doing this now if you see the data in the employee table so you will be seeing that record will be there in the at the last with a tim j and all now if you go to the audit table so you can see the same record in the audit table as well with a cm details 21 so with a date and time a new employee added an employee now let's apply again delete operation on the particular table similarly i want to delete now 21 21 is newly added but i want to do that again i want to do the delete option now let me run this so once i run this again two rows are affected one row for uh, deleting one row for inserting into the audit table now let me run the audit table you see this yeah, you can see this so 21 new employee is added and again 21 new employee one employee is deleted so this is how my triggers are going to work so these triggers are going to save along with the table so whenever i remove a table so these triggers also will automatically remove from a database so it's a kind of um, constraints that's it so thank you for watching please keep watching our videos and provide your feedback thank you